Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to get started using the SP32 and the camera. Uh, to get started, the best way and the simplest way is precisely to run uh, the example from the Arduino core, which is what we are going to do, the basic, cam basic camera example that is available there. And it's a very good way to make sure that the hardware that we are using, uh, being it a board or SP32 connected to a camera, um, so there are multiple uh, models around the market, but it's a very easy way for us to get started quickly and to validate if our hardware is working correctly uh, before we try to go to more customized code that will pose other challenges that will will need us to understand all the software, all the functions behind um, to make it work. But before that, we want to make sure that our camera model, the one that we've got and our particular unit is working correctly. And like I was saying, the easiest way is to run the Arduino core example. And it is precisely what we are going to do here. We just need to uncomment a definition uh, to indicate what is the board that we are using. Uh, and apart from that, it should work if we find some problem right away running the basic example. So probably our unit might have some problem. It's not correctly connected, uh, but it will make debugging easier uh, before trying to figure out problems in the actual code. So in terms of camera models, there are plenty of them in the market, uh, plenty of camera boards uh, of the SP32 that uh, some of them already have the, a socket to directly connect a camera. Uh, so plenty of options. In my case, I'm using this HW818, uh, like you can see here. It can be bought for around 10 euros at eBay. There are plenty of, of sellers that sell it. Uh, so it's a model. It was the one that I've picked. Maybe we're uh, using another one. But this one, just to give a brief overview, it works pretty well. Um, I liked it a lot because besides having the, uh, the camera, it has already a socket. So we just need to plug the camera. No need to do any custom wirings, which might be complex due to the number of pins needed. Um, to control the camera. Uh, it already has here a socket for a, a SD card, a micro SD card. It already contains a USB socket, meaning that we don't need any additional hardware because there are a couple of camera models around there in the market where you need to have a serial to USB converter uh, and use it to be able to upload a program to the um, to the board here, uh, we just need to have an USB cable, meaning that the camera is pretty much the camera board is pretty much ready to use out of the box. Uh, in my case, uh, from the seller where I bought uh, this camera already, this uh, camera board already shipped with the actual camera, an OV2640. Uh, uh, I would say that most of the most of the sellers will include a camera, but make sure uh, before you buy to know if you are just getting the board or the board plus the camera. Another interesting thing here about this model is that besides the internal RAM, uh, it has four uh, megabytes of external PS RAM, which will be very useful because some of the features available uh, in the camera, such as higher resolutions, higher qualities, uh, will depend on the amount of uh, RAM available. And we'll see that in the program, there are some definitions that depend on that. So this makes it for the price it costs. Personally, I think it makes it a very interesting uh, board. But again, there are plenty of them in the market and you should choose the one that suits better your, uh, your needs. Now, looking into the actual codes, Basically, you can find this basic example uh, after in installing the Arduino core uh, for the SP32. You can go here uh, in the Arduino EDA, you go to File, Examples, and you look here under the examples for the one that says SP32. It contains some generic uh, examples for the SP32, not necessarily tied to any particular library. And as you can see here, there's this one for camera and camera web server, which in essence um, will set up a, a HTTP web server that amongst other things allows us to get a stream uh, of images being uh, obtained from the camera. It allows us to play around with the resolution of the image, um, fine tune some of the parameters. So it's a very interesting example, but keep in mind that it's also uh, a bit complex, okay? So we are not going to dive deep in the internals or the details of this example, uh, because the idea is precisely to get here, just very quickly uh, do a small configuration and get started seeing that our hardware is working. Uh, but let me tell you that is a very nice source of knowledge. If you start digging into the source code, you'll begin to see uh, how to configure the camera, some more advanced definitions. So there's plenty to learn from here. But again, we are not going to cover in detail as the code is 
quite complex. So in my case, I've already opened it here and I've already uploaded it to my SP32 because the sketch is quite big, the, the code, so it takes a while, so I've already uploaded. But as you can see here, once you open the main example, you already have three additional uh, files here that are needed for everything to work. So as you can see, there's uh, a lot happening under the hood for this example to, um, uh, to work. So, uh, looking very briefly into the code, I also don't want to get in, into many details even here in the basics. Again, I just want to show you this working. But basically, uh, we start by including, or the example starts by including this ASPCamera.h library, which pretty much exposes the functionalities we need to interact with the camera. Uh, so, this is uh, one library that we are going to be using in other examples and then the wifi.h because we need to connect the sp32 to wifi network in order for us to be able to uh, to then expose uh, our http server so uh, from this point onward uh, as you can see there's a bunch of defines here commented uh, and one of them is uncommented and basically this defines uh, you should choose the one and leave uncommented the one that applies to your camera model. Let me tell you that for the particular camera model that I've showed you, let me go back here. Uh, basically this doesn't map to one of the, the basic uh, models that are supported in this sketch or in this basic example from the Arduino core, uh, but basically um, this uh, I think our camera model uh, has the same pin definitions or the pin mappings that the model uh, I've bought from eBay. So basically this one works for uh, my camera model and uh, I, I can just use the same definitions. In your case, if basically you have a camera that matches one of the defines you have here, it's just uh, uncommenting the corresponding one. If we have one of those more generic words, uh, that uh, it's not clear exactly what is the, um, their, their model, or even if they have a custom uh, uh, well-defined model, maybe you'll need to dig up a bit on the pin definitions and you'll need to understand if some of these ones um, of these uh, out-of-the-box camera models, uh, these definitions, if they can be applied to your particular one. So this might require a bit of digging. Um, so it will uh, basically depend on that. So in terms of the, the, this define, what we'll do is, if we go to this camera pins .h file, it will basically uh, allow us to define um, the pins of the ASP32 that will be connected to the board for that particular model. And as you can see here, they differ depending on the model. And this will be one of the information that we need to assign when initializing the um, the camera. As you can see here, I'm using this AI Thinker model, and there are here uh, a bunch of defines that will uh, get enabled as soon as I chose that option from the main uh, from the main sketch. And as you can see here, there's then the include of that file that I've just shown. Uh, apart from that, there's these uh, uh, two credentials here for the Wi-Fi network. Naturally, you need to change these by the credentials of your uh, Wi-Fi network. I've already changed by mine and upload with the correct values, uh, so it's just changing these placeholders. Then there's this um, function definition here that basically uh, is a function that allows us to start uh, the HTTP server. is defined in one of those um, files that um, are included here for the um, for this example to work, but we are not going to look into detail um, on the, on its implementation. So moving on to the Arduino setup, as you can see, here we start by uh, opening a serial connection, and then in the example, there's the definition of this uh, uh, the declaration of this camera underscore config underscore t uh, variable. This is basically a struct that will hold the basic configurations. Um, for for setting up the camera. As you can see here, there are a lot. I'm not going to go into detail uh, over all of them, but basically uh, many of them are assigning to these uh, to this track the pin numbers or the pins of the SP32 that are connected to the board. Naturally, um, the, the, the camera driver needs to know that to interact with the camera. And basically, this is using the definitions that were there on the camera underscore pins dot edge file. And accordingly to the model we have chosen, different values may end up being assigned here. So there are other parameters, for example, here the pixel format, which is defined as JPEG, um, some, for example, here the crystal frequency, etc. Uh, but we are going to stick with the defaults that can be seen here. Just one detail, as you can see, 
like I mentioned when I was talking about the camera uh, model, the fact that we have PS RAM available or not influences uh, the resolutions. For example, as you can see here, uh, the resolutions and the quality of the images that we can get. Uh, so basically, since this uh, example from the Arduino Core uh, is covering a lot of different uh, camera models, some of them um, have PS RAM, sorry, not the camera, but the, the camera board. Uh, some of the camera boards have PS RAM, others don't have, so basically it is accounting for that fact, dynamically checking if PS RAM is available and defining here the, the default frame size and the JPEG quality accordingly to that. Just one note, just to understand why this value uh, when you have PS RAM is lower than this value, is basically this JPEG quality parameter is a value between, I believe is 0 and 63 or 64, uh, but basically uh, the lower the value, the higher the JPEG quality. So as you can see, if we have PS RAM available, we can go to lower, uh, to higher uh, JPEG quality. So apart from that and some other defines, um, then we call this function here, ASP camera init, and we pass the address uh, of our strut, and this will take care of the camera initialization. Uh, and then obviously this function returns a, um, a variable, returns a value that we can use uh, to do error checking. If everything uh, goes okay, we can proceed. If the value returned by this function is different from ASP underscore okay, it means that some error has occurred and obviously we cannot proceed with the example. Then there are here some other, uh, accordingly to the model of the camera, there are here being done some other fine tuning to the parameters. Again, we are not going to cover this in detail because some of this uh, is very specific to the fact that this sketch needs to account for different camera models. Um, so hopefully when we are working with our uh, examples, we don't need to account for this. We just know the, the, um, the camera uh, board we are using and the characteristics, and we are probably going to be able to short down and to not have so many ifs and, and decisions depending on the camera model if we are using um, a single one. So after the initialization of the camera and the fine tuning of the parameters, we can see here um, a very standard connection to the Wi-Fi network using the credentials we have defined before, waiting for the, the connections to be established. And then we are calling this start camera server function that was uh, the header was defined uh, there on the top and the implementation is in one of these files. Uh, so basically this will kick the, um, or will uh, make the, the server up and running and that server, HTTP server, will then um, will then wait for incoming requests. So as you can see here in the main loop, we are not doing any computation, uh, so we don't uh, need to put anything here. So this default example opted to put here a big delay. Uh, just one note, uh, this is to help us reaching the, the um, the server where uh, the endpoint that will be exposing the HTTP server uh, to us and will be uh, exposing to us the, the stream from the camera and, and all the functionality associated from the camera. There are these prints here that indicate the URL that we should reach. And as you can see here, uh, it is printing the local IP address. There's no name resolution here. So the, the example is focused uh, on putting up a server so we can uh, access directly by uh, by using the, um, the local IP assigned to the SP32. So as I've said before, I've already uploaded the code to my uh, ASP32, as you can see here, this starts already printing some information. This part here uh, is already after I'm collecting images from the server, but uh, as you can see here, uh, this is the endpoint that we should connect to in order for us to access the, the web server. So let me go here. I had already it opened on another tab, but let me show you guys from scratch. Let me close the old one. And as you can see here, this is an interface. Like I've said before, this example is quite complex already because it allows you to, to fine tune and to choose amongst a lot of parameters. Obviously this part here is HTML uh, that is being served by the, um, by the ASP32. Still there's a lot of parameters here and we need to have the corresponding um, handling functions in the ASP32 uh, to handle the changes to these parameters. So that's why uh, I did not want to, to go deep in the code because it's quite complex. So you can click here on this start stream, okay? And as you can see here, the camera already shown an image. It's still because mine is, is just paused here. I can show you. So here, just a quick 
look around. So as you can see here, it's showing in real time, very uh, with a very nice frame rate. Uh, this is bouncing a bit, sorry, because my model, the connector is one of those flexible connectors. So that's why it bounces so much. But if you leave it still, uh, you can see that the image is very clear. Okay, so we can play around here a bit with the resolution. Okay, so let me fine tune it. Sorry, I've chosen the same, but for example, SVGA. So as you can see here, XVGA. Okay, and we can go up to higher resolutions. Okay, obviously, as you can see, this affects the frame rate as is expected, so it's not so fluid anymore. But it is normal, we are talking about a resource constrained device. Uh, anyway, for the price of such a device, it's awesome what we can get from, from a device that costs around 10 euros. Um, the quality of the image is really, really acceptable. Um, and basically, as you can see here, we can even fine tune it a bit. So in this case, I'm lowering, as you can see here, um, going from that parameter that I've mentioned before, Okay, so here it is uh, putting lower quality in the JPEG image. So let's put it back to higher quality. As I've said, lower values mean higher quality. Then you can play around with other parameters such as brightness, okay, contrast, for example, saturation. So there's a lot to play around. To be honest, some of these parameters, I'm not even uh, much aware about what they do. So I've started to play around with the camera, but there's so much um, still to learn. So uh, some of these parameters um, are still, I don't still have uh, an idea what they do, uh, but some of them are quite obvious, like brightness and contrast and quality. Those more complex ones, you need to dig a bit if they make sense to, to fine tune or not, or to keep the defaults. Um, so. Obviously, there's a lot to explore. Uh, there's also this here, this face recognition, recognition and face detection mode. To be honest, I, I have tried this one, uh, but by some reason, my board crashes after a while, so I have not been able yet to pinpoint the reason. I'm not sure if it is a problem with the example code of the version that I'm using, or if it is something with my uh, board model that doesn't have enough resources for this. Um, still, you can obviously uh, test it for your board, uh, maybe in, a, in it's a version of the code, I haven't yet um, dived deep into that, uh, but just to give you the note in case you, you encounter the same problem. So there's this, there's this get still that basically allows us to take a picture. Okay, now I'm moving the camera and it is no longer, uh, it is no longer showing the stream. As you can see here, this, we need to click again, start stream to go back to streaming mode, okay. Uh, but basically that's it, uh, this is it, we can, oh, let me just show you the mirroring option, so you can flip the image as you can see here, which is also an interesting uh, feature that we can use and might be, uh, might be needed. That's it, so this is the simple example, um, it's quite a big video, but if you see uh, most of the um, in terms of what we need to do to get started is just uncommenting uh, when define and then putting the credentials of the network. Very easy, very simple. And from this point onwards, I already know that my hardware is working correctly and properly. And I have more confidence now to, to when I start exploring uh, custom functions, when I start to, to, to trying to fine tune the code or to write code to suit my application, um, I can already be more sure that my hardware is working correctly. Uh, and obviously, uh, when I find some bug, I will first focus um, and seeing if it is a problem with the software, uh, because I, I am more or less sure that uh, the hardware is working fine. Uh, obviously, there might be some, some hardware problem that we did not find here, but we need to start somewhere. And this seems a good idea, at least it was the first uh, the first thing that I've tried, so this camera example, and from that I started building uh, other examples that I'll be sharing in other videos. Uh, obviously, much much simpler, uh, much simpler stuff. Because again, this is a quite complex example that I encourage you to read the implementation, the implementation details. There's a lot there to learn, but uh, the videos that I'm going to be doing uh, will be much simpler and focus on single functionality, so we can clearly understand what's going on. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, please make sure to like and to subscribe. Uh, thank you very much.